Every day, you essentially pay your dues by doing the harder thing when it's the right thing to do. If you have somebody who has really stiff hip flexors and really stiff quads, right? Maybe the problem is that they're doing so many leg lifts and so many L holds and so many L rope climbs that it's causing them to not make progress in their splits and their flexibility, right? So that's, it's not that we don't want to do them. It's that, that maybe for that athlete, we can modify that and we can do a different exercise to complement half of their work so they can still get their core strong and still get their arm strong, right? But in a different way. So one of the reasons we like to do this or one of the ways we like to do this is just reverse slider crawls, right? You can see in this position, her hips are open or flat. She's squeezing her glutes, but she's still working on core and she's still working on getting her shoulders strong this might be a better exercise for those athletes with really really stiff shoulders over just doing more leg lifts and more rope climbs maybe you can knock the volume down of these and supplement as soon as their shoulders get more mobile in a couple weeks you can add these back in and focus on a nice slow lower the other way we see this is in um, rope climbs. A lot of kids doing L hold rope climbs, doing leg lifts. They may also have, again, I know you're trying to work core and legs. It's really important for bars. But if you get so stiff in your hip flexors that you can't open your hips for a full split or for a sprint, right, that's going to be a big problem. So what you might be able to do is still work on your upper body with horizontal rows. But again, this is the the hips are flat, the hips are open, right? We're not going to contribute to hip flexor or quad stiffness. This is kind of like that addition by subtraction concept for a few weeks. You can still do plenty of exercises to get strong, but you're not going to contribute to the issue. But from a flexibility point of view, the best way to start to incorporate these things to actually show up in gymnastics is not to start with a really fancy drill or a really fast technical drill. It's to start with, can you lay on your back flat and get your arms over your head? Can you just swing on a bar and get your, you know, your shoulders to open up properly, right? Doing a 10 minute basic circuit maybe a couple times per week, especially in line with a flexibility circuit that we'll talk about, those are probably going to be the best ways to make these things show up long term. Okay, so starting from your cultures, your values, and your habits, uh, when it comes down to hip flexibility, right, do no harm, right? You should not be hurting someone's hips. You should not be causing someone to get worse with your flexibility program, and that's not a malicious intent thing. It's oftentimes just a, a lack of education or maybe just not understanding uh, the hip anatomy really, really well, and so I'll offer you guys the, the kind of best practices I find, but that's the number one thing is if you find athletes are getting really sore hips and can't move forward, you have to stop and you have to say, okay, how can I learn more? What do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? How can I find someone who's going to give me some more information about this before we have more problems? Okay, all the research is pretty clear that uh, consistency is more important than intensity, right? Finding a good screen and doing three or four things every single day that are based on really good science and also the end goal of whatever gymnastics skill they need to improve upon, right? That's going to be way more important than kind of having one epic 20 to 30 minute over split session or, you know, weight stretching or things like that. Like that, that is just going to be a little bit too hardcore and it might overdose somebody instead of getting just consistent practice throughout the entire week and throughout maybe a couple months. Trying to take the best of what the research says plus what the best uh, expert coaching opinion says is really important. Gymnastics is a weird sport that has a really unique hip demands, and I think that uh, if you only follow the research and just blindly ignore what coaches think is valuable, uh, you're probably going to miss the boat because it won't be specific to our sport. And especially with hips more so than shoulders is that uh, there's no two athletes hips that are the same and I think the worst thing that you can do and that I've done in the past so I'm guilty as well but is is go to a camp or look online for a drill or find something that looks really really good and like oh man this would be awesome and you go to practice and you make all of your girls just do this stall bar drill or all these girls do this leap drill right and it's like a bell curve for the middle of the pack you know maybe 60% of the athletes it's just gonna it's gonna be okay it's not gonna be amazing it's not gonna be awful right but for 20% of those athletes it might do really really well remember that maybe 20% of those athletes it's gonna hurt right so if you just blindly apply flexibility drills without understanding the anatomy and why you're doing it and how maybe one athlete might have to change the drill or do a different drill because of that you could really hurt somebody and you could really not only hurt somebody you can make some serious stalls and how much progress you're going to make you could sit there spinning your wheels for weeks and weeks and weeks and not excuse me see progress because it's just not specific to them, right? If you try to, you know, use a screwdriver to bang a hammer uh, nail in, it's not going to go well. So you got to make sure you have the right tool for the right job. Okay, and then lastly, it kind of combines everything. It's just happily a mutt, right? Don't be afraid to learn from PTs, ATs, chiropractors, uh, you know, coaches, sports scientists. Everybody has an opinion that's probably valid as long as it's based on really sound quality uh, evidence or expert coaching experience. This is a really good gymnastics general screen we do, but there's many other things that you can do that are specific to, you know, more hip mobility, right? So we already talked about this, this Thomas test it's called where they lay down and we're looking for the thigh to be parallel, which you can see here it is. That tells us her hip flexor is nice and flexible. And we also look to see, can the knee bend to 90 degrees right here? So if the hip is flat and the knee is bent, that kind of is telling you that you have really good hip flexor and quad stiffness, or sorry, that you have really good hip flexor and quad flexibility. 
So you can do that one, right? You can do a straight leg raise. You can do a band assisted straight leg raise. You can do what's called a Faber test. You can do, you hold the, the hip and it drops it down. You want to be about one fist width away from the table here, right? But these are all medical specific screens that are general. Okay, so this is that big study I talked about. It came out in 2018. And essentially, you can see here on the side, I pulled this picture from it. Is that it? Look at 26 studies. They looked at static stretching, active stretching, passive stretching, ballistic stretching, and PNF stretching, right? And what they found is that honestly, all of them were okay, right? Ballistic stretching seemed to be not great out of all of them, but PNF, static, uh, so PNF, active and passive were all really, really high, and static seemed to be the most effective uh, with that 30 second bout. But the, the key here, again, consistency over intensity, right? All these things kind of work. They're based on an assessment. Right, and they're based on proper movement patterns and proper technique, they're probably all gonna work, right? So they found five minutes per week, right? So that two times 30 seconds per day, five days per week, right, equals five minutes per week. That was the best parameters of static stretching and others to help increase range of motion, right? So it was assessment first, then you gotta be consistent in what you do. That's gonna be so important. If you know what muscles or groups are limited from an assessment medical provider or elsewhere, you consistently do stretching and soft tissue work every single day, and then you kind of do it in a circuit that's gonna be specific to gymnastics, right? That's going to probably lead to your best long-term progress. And this study just happened to come out two or three months ago. So I put it in, you know, reviewed it and kind of picked it apart and then looked into some really good stuff we can take away here, right? But again, it's one fifth of the puzzle after, after screening. And then along with some of the other stuff we'll talk about in the lecture, but people always ask me about what type of stretching, how long, what should I do? Why does it work? Right? Again, we think that we're just relaxing those muscles and especially with static stretching or other stretching, uh, what we're doing is probably teaching the, the athlete and the, the perception of their stretch to be more tolerable. So we're maybe not increasing the length of those muscle fibers themselves, uh, but we'll just teach those athletes to tolerate the stretch and, and relax into their stretch. And that's probably going to be probably, excuse me, the best way to go about this.